So uh, a few things about me. Uh, I've just recently moved to London from Greece. <laughs> and uh, for the past five years, I've been doing uh, Node.js professionally, uh, remote jobs uh, with, for startups in the USA. Uh, I'm doing a lot of open source work. Uh, got over 14 PM packages published. Uh, lots of contributions to major uh, packages used by the Node community. Um, and I'm also very active. I've, uh, I had been very active back in my hometown. I was running the local Node.js meetup there. Um, I founded SKJ Tech IO, which is like uh, an umbrella of all the local communities and ignited the local scene there. And uh, that resulted in us in the whole community uh, organizing the David Conference, which is a world-class conference happening every year in June in uh, sunny Greece. So if you want to get some sun, it's a great opportunity. It's going to cost you uh, less than a ticket in any high-end uh, conference, <laughs> including uh, airplane tickets and hotel. So uh, let's get started. Uh, today we're going to, talk, going to talk about inheritance in JavaScript. And uh, there are lots of ways to do inheritance. It's a very battled issue in JavaScript. Um, it, is, it can be complicated. And today we will talk about the classical prototypical inheritance. You may uh, hear it as pseudo-classical as well. And what we are going to talk about specifically is how inheritance works. And this is going to be the focus of this talk uh, versus comparing different uh, ways to do inheritance. Having said that, I am going to give a brief explanation of why I'm talking about classical uh, inheritance. And uh, one of the main uh, reasons is that classical inheritance was a, a type of inheritance intended by the JavaScript creators to be used for inheritance. So there are specific keywords in the language that um, are being fully used and utilized by doing prototypical inheritance, like the new keyword or the instance of uh, keyword. Um, the class, the new class keyword introduced uh, in ECMAScript 2015 and afterwards basically does classical inheritance behind the scenes. It's basically sugar for classical inheritance, as all of you know. And uh, before we had the class keyword, the Node.js uh, libraries provided a built-in method to help us perform inheritance, so the core library util has the method inherits, which allows us to do uh, prototypical inheritance in JavaScript. Um, there are many alternatives to classical inheritance. Uh, just doing classical inheritance can be done, in, again, in so many ways. Uh, you can have composition, which is a different thing entirely. Uh, you can use object literals uh, to do uh, what you need to do, but again, this talk isn't about comparing. This is about diving deep into how um, inheritance works in JavaScript. So again, like I said, it is the language's intended way for inheritance. Um, it's generally accepted uh, as a way to do inheritance. My last point is that in the JavaScript community, everybody knows, you all know, that there's a high, very high signal-to-noise ratio. And um, that can be a problem. Uh, what I advise is to stay uh, confident and focused on what you do and keep an open mind uh, towards everything, albeit an open critical mind. Okay? Many people, uh, like Adam said, are rediscovering things every day. <laughs> and uh, we don't need to go back. So let's uh, have a quick look on how it. Uh, Prototypical inheritance happens. This is um, for ES6 and beyond, ES2015. Uh, you basically have uh, the class keyword, and you, uh, you have the statement, where inside the class statement, you can declare a constructor. That is, again, a keyword, which basically is the function that's going to get executed each time we instantiate a new instance of that class. Inheritance happens with the extends keyword, as you can see right under the definition of animal. Um, 
we simply extend and that's it. Pretty simple, straightforward. Why should we bother more with that? Because before we had that, we had to do it more manually. Um, we had to uh, declare our uh, class as a function, which basically that was a convention that we did and said, all right, our animal is now a class and uh, we indicate that by capitalizing the first letter. And every class basically is a function. And that function is the constructor. And that, along all, along all the presentation slides, you're going to see that notation, C tor, that is the constructor. And that is the best way to refer to classes in JavaScript. So you go, I'm, from here on out, I'm going to call them as constructors rather than classes, because that's what they are. And if I want to inherit, if cat wants to inherit from animal, what I have to do is, again, declare the constructor. And on the very first line, I need to call the parent constructor by using the call method, which is a built-in method in the function. It is a predefined method that all functions have. We are going to explain this further down, what this does right there. And after our constructor declaration is finished, we do the util.inherits, we invoke the util.inherits method to, uh, to perform the inheritance. That is how we did prototypical inheritance in ECMAScript 5, which basically is any node version before 8. Now, <clears throat> um, what inherits does, uh, I'm breaking out this uh, function. It's basically two lines of code. Uh, we have the child constructor and we have the parent constructor from which we are going to inherit. And what we basically need to do is to copy the prototype of the parent to the child. And the way this happens with uh, ES5 is by using the object.create method, a very handy method that's going to create a new object uh, based on a source object that we provided. And um, and then what we need to do is uh, point the constructor to the parent so that uh, we establish the chain of inheritance. Now, what happens before ES5? We had ES3 and object.create doesn't exist in ES3. And basically this is the lowest common denominator for inheritance in JavaScript. This is how we did JavaScript uh, this is how we did inheritance in JavaScript in uh, 2010, 11, uh, before we got uh, object create and uh, <clears throat> all of those goodies. A lot of crazy things going on here. We are going to analyze them later on. Don't get afraid. So, <laughs> exactly. Prototype. Um, JavaScript is a prototypical language, so it has its foundations is upon a prototype. A prototype's job is to, uh, to help uh, create new instances. It's basically a blueprint, okay? Um, everything in JavaScript is an object. So uh, a string is a new string, a boolean, a number. And um, the only things that don't have a prototype are instances or objects, which are considered the result of the blueprint, right? So we have the blueprint, and using that, we create instances and objects. So those don't have a prototype. Functions have a prototype, and it points to their originating constructor method, which is a built-in um, facility of JavaScript. Now, um, again, prototype is the blueprint for creating objects and instances. In that example, the pony is the instance. And by using the new keyword, we instruct JavaScript to execute the animal constructor. Um, and this is the constructor definition, all right? It's very simple. Uh, you just define a function. That's all it is. And this right there is a local variable to our constructor with the keyword this. This 
as a keyword uh, is one of the most uh, dreaded keywords when learning JavaScript and, and the scope altogether. I am going to try to explain it to you today. I hope I make a good job of it. You let me know. Um, so after we have defined our constructor, we can define methods on our constructor only by using the prototype definition. That is when we create methods that are going to be available in the instances that we create. So in the very last line that you see pony get name, that wouldn't be available if uh, we define the get name on the animal um, function directly. And we'll see soon enough an example on how that is going to behave. Um, the prototype itself is an object, all right? So uh, when we uh, print it and see what it contains, we can see that it has basically two properties. It has a constructor, which is basically the function that gets invoked to build our object. We've already seen a constructor. And it has a proto-reference, which is a reference to the parent constructor. So there is a chain of inheritance always going on. And we're going to see more about that uh, later, in a little bit. Um, every variable in JavaScript has a proto property. And its job is to point to the originating, to the parent prototype, to the prototype that was used to create that instance, that property, that variable, that everything. Every, every variable has a proto. Um, again, proto is a reference, okay, uh, points to the object that constructed the instance and for when we're using the new keyword to instantiate a constructor, naturally the proto of that instance points back to the constructor. That's how this works. Um, now. We, saw, we saw, uh, this is the, uh, the example from ECMAScript 3 inheritance, and everybody went bonkers when, when it's, they saw it. Now let's, let's go through it line by line and understand what's going on here. So at the very first line, we create a temporary constructor. We create a temporary constructor so we can copy the parent prototype onto that. And I'll explain a little bit later why we, could, we need a temporary constructor. We then assign, um, by reference, the, uh, the, prototype, the, the prototype of the constructor that we want to inherit from. We assign it to the temporary constructor. And we do that so we can then invoke the temporary constructor with a new keyword and get a fresh copy of the prototype properties. The prototype properties are properties that can hold values or methods. And last but not least, on the newly constructed uh, child constructor, which is uh, the class that inherits, we assign the constructor itself. Remember, the child constructor right here is nothing but a function. So what we are saying is basically we are starting to create block by block how a constructor is. And a constructor, what does it have? It has methods and properties on its prototype, and it has a constructor, all right? And that is what we are doing right there. And um, yeah, again, this is what I've explained for, uh, for the proto. The proto is going to reference uh, the temp. And um, th that's about it. Now, let's see why we did that. Um, it's essential that, uh, that we discard the default child's prototype. And uh, 
so we essentially discarded the default child's prototype and we overrode it with the instance of the parent constructor. There is, why did we do that, right? That's the important question here now. Um, if we directly assigned the parent constructor prototype to the child constructor's prototype, we would be assigning by reference. And that would mean that the child's and the parent's prototypes would be exactly the same. If I added a new method on the, on the child, that would automatically put the method on the parent as well. So we would have side effects between them. So that is why we need to have a temporary constructor to initialize, uh, to, do the, to do the new temp constructor. And the reason we need the, that, the new, is because in ES3, we lacked the object create method. Um, the reason why we wouldn't do this directly, we, and we did, we instantiated the temporary constructor with the new keyword, instead of instantiating the parent constructor, is that if we did that within the context of inheritance, we would uh, unintentionally invoke the parent constructor, and that can have dire consequences. And that is why we need a temporary constructor to perform the copy of the prototype, which is an object. Yeah, there's a lot of, there are a lot more. <laughs> so again, we copied the parent's prototype to the child. And now we need to make sure that all the constructors from our parents will be invoked um, in the right scope. And this is where things get a little crazy. Uh, let's talk about the scope. Now, um, this is again an example of inheritance in ECMAScript 5. I'm using ECMAScript 5 to better illustrate what is going on. And as you can see in that example, we have a line that is performing a call right there. And what the call method does, first of, uh, who is familiar with the dot call and dot apply methods of functions? All right, good. So what call does is basically says, invoke the animal function. Remember, animal is a constructor. What is a constructor? A function. Invoke the animal function, but by using this context. And the context is provided as the first argument of the call method. In this case, the context is this. When we are instantiating a constructor using the new keyword, using the new keyword, we create a new scope. And that constructor is executed within that new scope. And that new scope is referenced by the keyword this within the constructor. OK, I have lost most of you. <laughs> so, so what we want to do is on the child constructor, we want to invoke the parent constructor so that we are sure that all of the inheritance chain par, uh, constructors are invoked. But we invoke it with the um, scope of the new instance. And thus, we need the call method. And that is what <clears throat> ensures that every constructor in the inheritance chain is going to be invoked with the same scope or context. You may have heard it as well. And that is what uh, will enable us to do proper um, handling of prototypical inheritance. Again, scope. So, scope refers to uh, where variables and functions are accessible and in what context it is being executed. All right? Um, in the case of an instance, scope is critical in maintaining access to methods and local properties. So, when we are defining a property, uh, this age equals 20, in order to access that property, we need to access it within the same scope. Let's see some examples of that. 
again, this name equals name. So our constructor has an argument. When we are doing a new animal, we give it uh, as an argument a name, so that animal has a name. And then we can get the name by invoking the method getName, which basically returns this name. Now, let's see how scope behaves. Var animal equals new animal cat. So now the name of our instance is cat. We say animal.getName. We get cat in return. Everything works. If we assign the method into a new variable and we lose the context that is the animal and then invoke that variable, the context is lost and we're getting undefined. Um, what we need to do is use the keyword bind. And what bind does is that it encapsulates our function within the context that we have provided it and returns the encapsulated function unexecuted. So we can execute it on the next line and get the proper response because the context and the scope are correct. Um, Now, the first example, <clears throat> again, we are playing with the call and uh, the apply methods. So what does call do? It invokes the method getName. GetName now doesn't have a scope because we abolished it. But we say that I need you to get invoked with the context of the animal. And then it returns cut. Uh, we could uh, further hack that and create another instance with the name dog. And if we mix the, the two together, we would get mixed responses. So we would invoke the get name of, of the cat animal and get dog as a response. But that's more complicated and unneeded. Call and apply have the same effect. It's their only difference is in the arguments. Uh, with call, you can assign any arguments serially in the function. <coughs> apply expects the arguments expressed as an array on the second argument of the apply method. So um, let's see some more practical examples on uh, scope. So a very classical example that everybody learns the hard way uh, is that uh, you can't, uh, you can't define the method without binding it to the scope. Otherwise, it loses its scope. It's the same effect as assigning the variable back. And um, one way to, to uh, skip that effect with modern JavaScript is to use the arrow function notation. Um, you can scroll through the presentation afterwards. It's already uploaded uh, on speaker deck. Um, and again, repeating what is going on here, I think we've gone through it uh, enough times so that uh, you're already familiar with it. This is the same steps of what is going on in the, uh, from Node 8 and afterwards. Things are looking uh, better in Node 8. Uh, this is how the prototype chain works, all right? And the reason I want to show you this is because I need you to be wary that if you are creating long inheritance chains, that can be a performance issue in JavaScript. Although I've never uh, faced that problem anywhere professionally, I didn't have to go past three levels of inheritance uh, in any of my projects. Um, some common gotchas uh, never define property values on the prototype. Always define them within the constructor. That is the purpose of the constructor, to construct the object and assign the, the properties. Um, of course, these are, these are errors that you're going to, to learn anyway. If you perform the util inherits at the end of the definition, it's going to overwrite all of your methods and properties, so do it right after it. Um, scope and callbacks. Right. So again, this is where uh, the scope becomes important when you have anonymous uh, callbacks. Sorry, uh, when you're essentially creating closures, uh, you don't have the right context within the closure. Be wary of that. That is very important. Um, 
We call constructors constructors and not classes because they don't behave like classes. They resemble a class and that's, that's, that's why we call it classical inheritance. It's not exactly, but in reality it's really prototypical inheritance. Uh, we signify a constructor by capitalizing the first letter. Um, use the constructor only to construct the instance. Do not do asynchronous functions inside the constructors. It's not allowed. Never return a value in a constructor. You are breaking the whole um, inheritance. Uh, use null as a best practice. That is, uh, don't. I mean, if, even if you don't have a value, don't define a new property within a method down the road. Put it on your constructor. Have it value null. And if yeah, that was uh, if you uh, define a, a function on the constructor and on, not on the prototype of the constructor, you're essentially creating what we call a static function that you can invoke directly by doing animal dot static effect fn, but that static method will not be inherited. That was it.